Hello everyone, this is Yu Zhang from the Zhejiang lab at Hangzhou, China. Today I will talk about brain encoding and decoding using biological constraint deep neural networks. The outline of the talk is as follows. First, I will give a brief introduction of brain-inspired AI uh, and neural AI. And we will specifically focus on the topics of uh, brain encoding, decoding, and representation learning. After that, I will give a short summary. So uh, in our opinion, the uh, ultimate goal of uh, neural AI is to find a path to bridge and uh, in-depth fusion of biological and artificial intelligence. Many researchers in the field have dedicated to find the link between the two fields. Dr. Ian Mings and uh, uh, Professor DiCarlo have uh, proposed a promising solution that is, we ask the biological brain and AI models to perform the same task. And we recorded the neural activity from biological brain and extract multi-level uh, image features from the AI models. Uh, and then we will find the, the correspondence between the two models. This correspondence can be used as a guidance for a future design of AI models and in backwards change the functional organization of the biological brain. So here we propose a general path to neural AI. Uh, the first stage is to build uh, biological uh, computational models of uh, brain cognition and specifically focus on brain encoding and decoding. For instance, we record brain activity using fMR under specific tasks and using a simple DNA model to extract features from the stimuli. We can find a strong association between the neural activity and DNA representations which can be then used for brain decoding or even reconstructions of visual stimuli. <clears throat> when replacing it with a state-of-art DNA models, such as a stable diffusion model, the image reconstruction meets high image standards and full of uh, image details, uh, as shown in the CBPR 2023 paper. <clears throat> Uh, the second stage of the path is to simulate uh, brain activity on a specific task using CNs or other more advanced AI models. Uh, we can uh, simulate task evoked neurodynamics that are triggered by visual task, auditory task, or even high order cognitive functions such as working memory and decision making. The third stage is to control or modulate neural activity using AI. Uh, there are currently many invasive and non-invasive approaches to, to modulate brain functions, such as DBS, TPS, uh, TMS, and TTCS. These techniques rely on medical equipment and might even have consequences if not properly operated. In the view of neural AI, we can control the neural activity of target neurons using neural feedbacks. In this example, the researchers have demonstrated that AI models generate uh, synthetic images that can strongly trigger neural activity in V4 neurons, even better than the classical curvature or naturalistic images. <laughs> However, current approaches of brain mapping still focus on the neural activity from a local area, for instance, using the classical functional localizers mm -hmm. or uh, MVPA um, and so on. With accumulating resources and data sets in the neuromedia field, especially in the, with the extensive sampling of a large population or even from a single subject, we could build more advanced AI models to understand the neural basis of brain cognition. Therefore, we proposed a biological constraint again to model neurodynamics of cognitive functions that can effectively combine both local and global neural activity through brain connectance. Um, we will start with the brain decoding and show you some interesting findings. Before that, in order to properly train the DNA model, we need a larger data set to start with. Um, here we used um, the HCP task fMR database acquired from over 1,000 healthy adults um, consisting of uh, seven different uh, cognitive domains and um, more than 20 task conditions. It uh, provides the tremendous uh, data resources for you know, the model training in the following. So the direct path of the brain decoding was to use a convolutional neural network so on uh, bring imaging data, treating them just like a natural image as the one that in the ImageNet. 
However, uh, in the actual experiment, we found that due to the high dimensionality of the brain images and high computational cost of the model, training a CN model on brain images is not an easy task. It faces uh, with uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, besides, the model may not even generalize well between tasks by only focusing on local activity from a specific region. So let's step back and reassess the task. We got a 4D fMR uh, data as input by using a CN model. We achieved high performance on specific task. By, uh, but it suffers from high computational cost and long training time. When applying um, the biological constraints such as brain atlas, we mapped the 4D fMR data onto a 2D time series matrix. And we can easily apply the RN or LSTM for time series analysis but it's still not enough. Next, we imported uh, the connectome constraint by restricting the information propagation on brain connectivity and combine the local and distributed neural activity on the specific task. One way is to use the graph neural networks. And uh, surprisingly, by even using such over uh, simplified uh, model architecture, we found that the decoding uh, model achieved very high uh, performance. So what is a graph convolution? The simple answer is it generalizes the classical convolution operation from a grid structure, just like a, a natural image, into a graph structure, as in the graph domain. The only difference um, uh, with the classical convolution is it calculates the weighted sum of features from the neighbors that are defined uh, in the adjacency matrix instead of using the spatial neighbors, and so on and so forth. So in the new image paper of 2021, we um, proposed a decoding pipeline based on the graph convolution neural networks. By only using 10 seconds of uh, fMR signals, we successfully decode 21 tasks uh, with a high decoding accuracy as high as 19%. Uh, the learned reputation also demonstrated that different types of bo uh, body movements gradually separated from each other during the training process. And we also want to find out what happened within the model. So by visualizing the decoding model from the spatial domain, uh, we find that uh, the salient features that strongly contributed to decoding model was biologically meaningful as well. Uh, for instance, we found the, sens uh, the sensory motor cortex for the motor task, uh, the auditory task, uh, the auditory and the language areas for the language task, uh, the ventral Mm, visual streams for the object and um, face recognition, and so on. Moreover, these salient features show high correspondence and um, uh, stability across um, subjects and even between trials, which means we don't need dozens of repetitions of cognitive trials as um, in a classical fMR uh, paradigm, but by using a single task trial, uh, the cognitive modeling can extract meaningful feature and representations of cognitive functions. So from the temporal domain, we also found that the model generally follow the shape of a hemodynamic response function with a variable peak around six seconds after the task onset. We confirm this pattern by using variable temporal durations ranging from a single frame as short as one uh, second to longer durations such as six seconds and 10 seconds. Uh, a short summary, uh, we built a G, uh, the GM-based uh, uh, decoding model that captures uh, the spatial temporal dynamics of brain cognition, and it extracts biological meaningful features under the specific task and achieved high decoding accuracy even at a single frame. So in the next step, we try to optimize this decoding architecture, including choosing the best brain atlas, uh, brain connectance, and the construction of brain graphs, and so on. So let's check the results in details. First of all, by simply modeling high-order interactions within and between uh, brain networks, we found uh, consistent improvements on all types of brain graphs. Uh, besides, uh, these high-order interactions show different impacts across different cognitive domains, depending on the demands of cognitive function. 
For instance, for high order cognition, such as working memory and relational processing, it requires high order interactions and functional integration uh, between networks. Um, on the other hand, for unimodal uh, brain functions, uh, such as motor and language tasks, it relies more on the neural activity within a specific network. So in addition to the improvement of decoding accuracy, the high order model also shows other benefits, including more robustness to random rewiring on brain connectivity, and also robustness to uh, random attacks on brain regions and networks. So in terms of uh, uh, the choice of brain atlases, we compared the different brain atlases derived from diffusion trachography, resting state, and multimodal atlases. We found that local homogeneity is an important factor for a decoding model, despite which modality or what kind of information that have been used to generate atlas. To confirm that, we specifically test the functional brain parcellations at multiple resolutions and found that the size of brain parcel can strongly predict the decoding accuracy. And the top performance was achieved around 400 parcels uh, in the entire cortex. No further improvement um, by using atlas at finer resolutions. So the functional homogeneity measures the quality of local activity. On the other hand, brain connectivity measures the information propagation and integration at the global scale. So by comparing different brain connectomes, including uh, brain topology, morphology, uh, anatomic and functional graphs, uh, connectomes, we found that different propagation speeds uh, were uh, achieved on these brain graphs. And consequently, different uh, decoding performance was achieved by these connectomes. As noted, uh, we found that the functional and anatomical uh, connectomes give the best decoding accuracy on the 21 task. Another factor uh, that usually uh, is connected by researchers is the sparsity of the brain graphs. Here, we specifically didn't use the full connectivity matrix because it may cause oversmoothing issues in GNN and increasing uh, the computational complexity of the model. Uh, the results indicate that the best decoding performance are achieved by using a KN graph with around 8 to 16 neighbors per node. So far, um, I have shown our practice on uh, brain decoding. Next, let's introduce some interesting findings on brain encoding as well. Um, I believe that most of us um, may be familiar with uh, uh, the famous voxelwise encoding model. It has successfully implemented mm, to map the visual and auditory stimuli onto the cortical brain, for which uh, different embedding models have been used um, to extract the semantic approaches from visual and auditory stimuli. Here, we focus on another topic, that is how brain encodes natural things uh, which usually contains multiple objects and complex relations between these objects. The current view on how we understand the world suggests that there are uh, probably two different forms of knowledge representation in the brain. According to the theory, the sensory information uh, from the visual and auditory stimuli are first translated into language-derived representation and save, uh, saved uh, this information in the entire brain. In order to test this hypothesis, we uh, specifically investigate uh, two different types of uh, the models on natural scene images. That is uh, a vision-drived uh, model and language-drived model. So for the vision-drived model, we tested the ResNet, the vision transformer. Uh, for language models, we tested multi-hot encoding and BERT. And, and uh, we additionally tested the multi-model uh, fusion model. Uh, such as the build, which combines the text and image features. In this experiment, we used the NSG dataset to consist of uh, eight um, participants, each viewing 10,000 uh, uh, different natural scene images acquired from the COCO dataset. So each scene image combines with detailed delineation of uh, object categories and five sentences of image captions. We will use all of these features in the following encoding models. 
The first model to test is the vision driver model. We mainly focus on the latent representation of different blocks from the ResNet 50. Indeed, we found some nice correspondence with, uh, within the visual areas, especially the primary and the secondary uh, visual cortex. By simply replacing it with more complex vision model, such as the vision transformer, we observed a similar representation pattern uh, with uh, some kind of uh, improvement in the visual area, but minor improvement in other high order cognitive areas. On the other hand, by transcripting these same images into text descriptions and embedding uh, these texts using language models like BERT, we found a large improvement in the representation accuracy, not only in the visual areas, but more importantly, in the frontal and parietal regions. And what's interesting is that the longer of the text descriptions and the detail of the description it is, uh, the better of the um, your representations. And the best representation performance was achieved uh, above, even above 0.7, which is uh, far beyond the current um, uh, results that have been reported in the literature. Another commonly used semantic representation is multi hot encoding of object uh, categories in the image, for which we also found consistent patterns among uh, four different subjects. Um, as shown in the figure, we found that the blue color representing uh, objects of transportation, green representing the sports, and pink representing the person and uh, uh, animals. Uh, these patterns are consistent with previous finding by Hughes in 2012. Um, moreover, we extract the multimodal encoding of natural things as well um, by using the VELT which extract the uh, image features from um, the visual trans vision transformer, uh, the language features from BERT, and then uh, combine the multimodal uh, information using the multimodal interaction model. Surprisingly, it gives even better representations. By comparing across different encoding models, ranging from vision to language and, and to uh, multimodal, encoding models. We found that multi coder encoding, especially the VELT, uh, resulted in the best encoding accuracy. And we could see that uh, the representation patterns uh, show a transition from the visual areas uh, to the parietal regions and to the prefrontal areas in the end. So uh, the question is, what are specific contributions of this vision-specific and language-specific representations, uh, for which we did a direct uh, model comparisons between VELT and VERT and the vision transformer. And we found that the vision-derived components, meaning located in the vis uh, vision, visual areas, but really in other uh, high-order cognitive areas. On the other hand, the language-derived components achieved high accuracy beyond vision, uh, visual areas, and many involved areas in the attention and uh, uh, frontal parietal networks. So in terms of both representation accuracy and spatial distribution, uh, our results suggest that uh, the language-derived representation play a critical role in our understanding of the real world. So far was our experiments on brain encoding and decoding. Next, we will show you some results on the representational learning. Uh, there are many ways to re represent the organization of the human brain. For instance, brain parcellations using anatomical and functional uh, features and, and the gradients and harmonics of brain connectomes and so on. Surprisingly, um, they are all based on a graph-based model for which Brain Graph uh, provides a series of new tools to model uh, the organization and function of human brain, with the nodes representing uh, different brain regions, the age representing brain connectivity, and node features captures uh, neurodynamics as well. Um, so we applied a, a graph-based embedding approach to model the task-evoked neurodynamics and generate hierarchical representations of brain cognition. Specifically, at the low-level representation, the model performs a special temporal decomposition of sensory processing. 
uh, at high level representations, the model captures a behaviorally relevant representation that provides better decoding of cognitive uh, states, uh, functional alignment across subjects, and strong uh, brain behavior associations. For example, we extract two levels of representation of motor task, suggesting a central priority gradient from uh, motor execution to motor planning. Similarly, uh, we extract a two-level representation of the language task, suggesting a posterior to anterior uh, gradient from auditory processing to language comprehension. In addition, the learned representation also significantly predict human behaviors, including the correct response of language tasks and the language difficulty levels. For high-order cognition, such as working memory task, we uncovered a three-level representations transforming from sensory processing to language uh, to memory abstraction. So in the first level, it mainly involves the sensory processing and it activated the visual areas in the ventral stream, such as FFA for face recognition um, and PPA for the place images. At the second level, uh, it uh, mainly involves uh, like encodes different levels of memory load, for instance, uh, two back versus zero back tasks. And it also activated uh, the frontal and parietal regions. At the third level, it demonstrate a preferential uh, representation state for face memory. Um, and surprisingly in the behavior data, we also find uh, uh, a similar pattern and that a participant performed better on memory uh, on face memory task, suggesting a super mode for face memory. So let's dive in and find out what really happens in these models. And as I suggest, at the low level model, uh, the model decomposes the cognitive process into multiple temporal stages and sub processes, and also extract the spatial activation maps at each stage. For instance, it, it decomposed language tasks into the queue, the auditory processing, uh, and the button um, processing phase. And for the motor task, it decomposed the entire task trial into the queue phase, the preparation and execution of motor task. And at the high level module, the model learned behaviorally relevant abstract representations. For instance, by using either the anatomical or the functional connectums, the learned representation strongly predicted the actual behavior performance of motor tasks, of working memory tasks, much higher than the raw data uh, representations. So besides uh, highly similar representations were acquired by using either the anatomical or the functional Brain connectums, and that was true for both the motor task and the work memory task. Moreover, along the representation hierarchy, um, the behavior abstraction uh, of neural representations were gradually enhanced um, in terms of both the intersubject alignment, the similarity, uh, the representational similarity analysis, and the brain behavior associations. And such neural representations were highly replicable among multiple sessions uh, and between different scanning conditions, as measured by the test rate test reliability. Uh, here is a short summary uh, of what I have been talking today. So today I have shown you that uh, graph embedding and uh, graph neural networks provides powerful tool to uh, analyze brain imaging data. And we also provide an optimized architecture for brain encoding and decoding, and also give you some insights to the representation learning of uh, brain cognition. In the future, we will focus on uh, another two topics of the neural AI, the simulation and modulation of brain cognition using AI. Stay tuned and looking forward to share with you next time. And then I would like to acknowledge the uh, Brain Inspired AI team at Zhejiang Lab, uh, our team leader is Professor Chen Zhejiang, who is just elected as chair of OGBM last year. Our team is dedicated to build computational models of uh, brain organization, cognitive functions, and brain disease. We welcome all candidates in the field of neuroscience to join our lab. Thank you. That's all for today. Bye-bye. <laughs>